Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to uh, this session. Achieve real-time pricing uh, with the uh, Quote Calculator plugin and RESTful Apex. Uh, Co-presenting with me today, uh, Samuel Czech, uh, who's a uh, demonstration engineer uh, for CPQ and billing. And myself, uh, I'm Erwan Kirebel. I'm a director of Code to Cash Solutions uh, with Salesforce. Um, and I joined Salesforce uh, pretty recently, just, uh, just a few months ago, actually. Uh, but I've been working in the CPQ space for almost 20 years now. And one thing for sure is that CPQ has changed a lot across those uh, 20 years or so. Uh, from the very beginning, when I started my career, where CPQ did not even exist, the acronym, uh, we were talking about configurators, and it was really a uh, niche solution uh, meant to be used by complex manufacturing companies uh, to today where the uh, capabilities have extended way beyond what they were before, uh, and also many other industries than manufacturing have adopted CPQ. So this growth over the last few years have been really amazing. So you know, what I like to do is uh, say by saying thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, being part of that growth. Uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, thank you for your participation, and thank you for uh, blazing the trails with us. Uh, what I'd like to do is, before we get started with the presentation, I'd just like to do a quick poll. Uh, how many of you are Salesforce CPQ customers? Uh, how many of you are uh, system integrators, consultants? All right, a few of them. And how many of you are ISVs, uh, software vendors? All right, one in the back. All right, great, awesome. Well, thank you, thank you all again. Uh, a Salesforce presentation will not be a Salesforce presentation without the forward-looking statement. Uh, we are a publicly traded company. We advise you that you should be making your buying decisions based on capabilities that are generally available now. Uh, but that being said, everything that we presented today is available now, and, and you can start uh, playing with those uh, as soon as we end the session here. Um, so I was talking about uh, CPQ and how it has changed over the last 20 years, and this is a representation of a customer life cycle of the quote to cash process. And if you look at all of those touch points here, you'll see that CPQ and billing actually uh, is involved into most of these steps here. Right? So from creating the quote, selecting products, configuring products, pricing a deal, uh, generating a quote, uh, converting that quote into a contract or an order, uh, invoicing the customer, collecting payment, recognizing revenue, all of those steps involve CPQ and billing at, in one shape or form. But there's one step that's, that's uh, pictured here that's pricing the deal. That's only one icon here. Uh, however, the impact of pricing is, is tremendous, right? Pricing has an impact on all the subsequent steps that you see uh, pretty much pictured here. And all customers, uh, you guys, have pretty complex pricing requirements, typically. Generally, uh, all customers uh, uh, live in a pretty competitive market, uh, so therefore they need to uh, price the deals and they need to find the right balance between uh, being competitive and making some money. And finding this right balance, you know, sometimes is tricky and involves some complexity. So most of our customers have some pretty complex uh, requirements uh, in terms of pricing. And we could talk about customers in the manufacturing space where they configure very unique pieces of machinery uh, for which they need to calculate the price based on the cost it takes to produce that piece of machinery. Uh, to customers that uh, sell credit card transaction processing services, for example, that also have some pretty com complex requirements in terms of pricing. Uh, the good thing is, uh, with Salesforce, uh, you have many ways to handle complex pricing. And, and we picture here uh, a few of the main uh, artifacts that we have within Salesforce CPQ to handle complex pricing. Uh, the first one is the price book. Right? You, I'm guessing you are all familiar with the price book concept that allows us to uh, sell a single product uh, in multiple different ways, multiple prices based typically on geography, for example. So I could sell this product at a given price in the UK and at another price uh, in Canada, for example. Uh, the next level in terms of pricing complexity is the concept of discount schedule. So with a discount schedule, uh, within Salesforce CPQ, you can uh, modify your price or override a price based on things like quantity, uh, or contract term, for example. So the longer the uh, customer contracts to a subscription, uh, the lower the price is gonna be for this uh, subscription product, for example. And the next level of that is the price rules. Uh, so price rules is uh, an artifact that we have as well in Salesforce CPQ. And the price rule allows our customers to make some price variations, override pricing, based on pretty much any criteria. 
and insert that pricing logic at any point uh, in the price calculation process. Uh, the price rules can be defined with a formula, for example, or could be leveraging uh, lookup tables as well, uh, matrices that allow us to either drive a discount or calculate a particular price point uh, for a given line item uh, in the quote. Uh, so all of this is good, and, and with those constructs, uh, customers are able to define some pretty complex uh, pricing logic to handle their pricing requirements. Uh, but sometimes this is not enough. Uh, sometimes our customers have some more complex requirements that cannot be handled or that could be better handled by uh, something else. So we have listed here four use cases uh, that would justify uh, looking beyond what we offer with price rules. And those are just four examples, four uh, use cases that we typically see uh, our customers implement, but there are more as well. Um, the first one is, you know, sometimes the pricing logic is just too complex, uh, and sometimes we could potentially implement that pricing logic using discount schedules and price rules, but you might end up with creating a lot of discount schedules, a lot of price rules that might end up being uh, hard to maintain, and sometimes just being able to write a few lines of code, write a few lines of script, uh, it might be easier, might be easier to create, might be easier to maintain, and might give you better performance as well. Uh, the second use case that we have here is that a lot of our customers have external pricing engines. Uh, take the example of SAP that does complex pricing through something they call price conditions. Uh, so sometimes our customers tell us, hey, we have this pricing engine. We could replicate the logic in Salesforce CPQ. We could create price rules to replicate the logic in Salesforce CPQ. But then you have a conversion effort that's uh, not to be minimized. You have to convert those price conditions into price rules that, that represents an effort. And also, if you want to keep the logic in both places, in SAP and uh, in Salesforce CPQ, uh, you introduce as well a risk because you have now two masters for the same pricing logic that introduces a risk. So many times our customers ask whether we could integrate with this uh, external pricing engine to inherit from the logic that's in this engine. Uh, the third item we have here is uh, sometimes during the coding process, we need to estimate some of the services. Uh, for example, we need to estimate shipping or we need to estimate taxes at the time of quoting. Uh, and sometimes web services already exist, right? There's a UPS, there's USPS uh, web service that already exists. So why not just punch out to this web service to let the web service do what it does, uh, calculate a shipping cost based on what products I have in my quote and then inherit from that pricing calculation in the quote in Salesforce CPQ. And the last example is kind of similar, uh, but it's, it's uh, that sometimes uh, customers want to display information in the quote, uh, like inventory availability of a given product, for example. Uh, sometimes just for display purposes, you want to communicate that uh, stock availability to the customer or help the, the uh, sales rep make uh, a good choice based on what products are available in the inventory. And sometimes that inventory position uh, needs to be calculated because you want to use that to trigger approval processes or maybe to trigger some other uh, discounting policies, for example. So for all those use cases uh, uh, at Salesforce CPQ and billing, we came up with a concept that is called the Quote Calculator Plugin. And what it allows you to do is uh, create uh, a script uh, based on JavaScript in order to uh, extend the capabilities of our quote uh, line editor. Uh, so this is JavaScript based. Uh, it runs on the client side when you are in the quote line editor. So that means that you get good performance. It also runs uh, in async mode as well. So for processes like recalculate or renewals, for example, the same uh, piece of code, which is JavaScript, also runs in Heroku in order to have the same uh, calculation output. Uh, it can leverage any information from the quote or any information from the quote line item, and it can also feed back information on the quote and or on the quote line item record. It could be pricing, it could be discount, or it could be something else as well, like uh, stock availability of a product, for example. Uh, for those of you who are developers and who are going to start playing with that concept, uh, there are a few uh, constructs a few concepts that you will have to get familiar with. Uh, the first concept is the concept of promise. Uh, chances are, if you are doing a quote calculator plugin, that you are doing this because you want to punch out to a third party system, you want to do an async call. 
Uh, so you'll have to be familiar with the concept of promise in JavaScript that allows us to manage those asynchronous processes uh, within uh, JavaScript. The uh, second concept, the second thing that you will have to be familiar with is a third party library called JS Force. And JS Force will allow you to uh, query the uh, Salesforce database and also uh, call Apex REST classes in order to query uh, some external engines as well through uh, REST API calls, for example. And the last thing you'll have to be familiar with is the concept of model. We have two main models, the quote model and the quote line model, and that will allow you to read and write data into those two objects, the quote and the quote line item. So talking about pricing and, and pricing waterfall a little bit further, this is an example of a price waterfall. Right? Calculating pricing is not just calculating one field in the line item, but oftentimes you have a complete price waterfall starting from a list price, applying system discounts, then applying manual discounts so that the sales rep overriding the price of a product in the quote. Uh, and then some of our customers uh, have a multi-tier distribution model, so we need to calculate uh, a reseller discount and a distributor discount. So we have some built-in logic to calculate all of this waterfall following a very precise uh, sequence of steps that the engine takes in order to calculate all of that. That sequence looks like this. Right? So and it's important for you guys who are going to develop code calculator plugin to understand the uh, concept of uh, sequence and those steps that are involved in the price calculation. The first step is actually loading the line items. The second step is actually uh, calculating the formula that you might have on the quote line item record. The third step is calculating the quantities. Uh, the uh, fourth step is executing all the pricing logic to calculate uh, list prices, uh, discounted prices, net prices, and discounts. Uh, the last step is calculating formulas uh, at the end of the day that might be impacted uh, by those uh, price calculations. And we talked about we talked about price rules earlier, and with price rules, you have the ability to determine at what point of that sequence, at what point of the workflow, do the price rules execute? Sometimes you might have a price rule that will need to drive uh, the price calculation. In this case, you might want to have the price rules execute first before the engine calculates the price. And in some cases, you want to execute the price rule after the internal pricing engine has run uh, its calculation because you want to modify something that's been run already. And in that case, you will want the price rules to be triggered at the very end of that process. And with the quote calculator plugin, the same logic applies. We have the concept of events that allows you to finely tune when you want a particular piece of script of the quote calculator plugin to run uh, within that uh, pricing calculation workflow in order to finely tune uh, how you want the pricing logic to be run by Salesforce CPQ. So now, with that being said, I'd like to uh, reintroduce you to uh, Sam, uh, who's gonna run you through a demo. We'll go through both uh, the end user experience of the demo, and we'll also spend a lot of time in the back end showing you exactly how this is set up uh, in the back end as well. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everyone. So before I jump into the demo here, I want to quickly go over the demo architecture that we're going to cover today. Um, so on the left, we have our Salesforce org, where we've got our Salesforce CPQ calculator. That's where the quote calculator plugin is going to be running. From the Salesforce CPQ quote calculator plugin, we're gonna make a call from there to our Apex REST class, which is hosted in the same Salesforce org. Then from that Salesforce Apex REST class, we're going to call out to our external system. So represented here by our Heroku box. Um, for the demo, I have a simple Node.js app connected to a Postgres database that stores our external pricing. But as Erwan mentioned, in practice, this could be any kind of external system that stores pricing data, um, inventory data, any kind of data that you would need inside of Salesforce CPQ but might, might not be replicated there. So the full data flow is Salesforce CPQ makes a call to the Apex REST class. From the Apex REST class, we make a call to the Node.js app. The Node.js app returns the pricing response to the Apex REST class, which then forwards it back to our Salesforce CPQ calculator, which then consumes it and reprices the quote line. So I'm at a new CPQ quote. I'm going to go into the quote line editor and we'll start by adding some products here. 
So in my product selection screen, I have two products. I have my externally priced product, which is a price uh, with the pricing defined in the external system. And then I have a regularly priced product where I'm just pulling the uh, price from the price book entry. It's also important to note here that the externally priced product does have a $0 price book entry so that it shows up in product selection and we can add it to the quote. Also, both of these products are standalone, um, but could be more complex bundles or have additional configuration required if we needed them to. So select both of those. I'm also gonna open up the Chrome Developer Console so that we can see the quote calculator plugin run as we enter the quote line editor. So once I hit save, we can see in the debug console, we've got the on before calculate running. It's taking an extra second because I'm running on the free tier of Heroku, so it has to wake up. Um, and then eventually it completes, comes back with the full response, and we can see in the quote line editor here, we have our two products that we selected, our externally priced product with the $0 list price, but the $50 special price. That's the field that we're using to store our external price. Um, the special price field will also reflect, reflect the list price for the regularly priced product so that we can continue to use that during our calculation here. So now that we're at the quote line editor, we can actually go through and see how our QCP ran. So first off, we're logging the quote model to the debug console. So this is great for somebody to go through and start to look at all of the different fields you have on this JavaScript quote model that represents uh, the actual Salesforce record. So it's got uh, an array of any groups that you might have on there, an array of all the line items. You can see there's also calculated fields like regular total. Um, and then there's a ton of keys on this object for all of the fields that are on the actual um, quote object. And then uh, most importantly for our use case is there's a record key which mirrors the actual uh, Salesforce record. So if you update the object in the uh, record key, those changes will get reflected inside of Salesforce. Uh, next, we're also logging the quote line model. So these are similarly complex JavaScript models. Um, a lot of details here. I won't go through all of them, but you can see there's a components key. So if there is a bundle, you can traverse the bundle in JavaScript without having to recreate it. Uh, next, we're logging the URL. So this is the URL of the Apex REST class in our Salesforce org that we're calling out to. Um, so we have it uh, exposed at the slash services, slash Apex REST, and then slash pricing endpoint. Then we have our request body that we're generating. So this is a very simple call out to our external system. We're just gonna get all of the product IDs from our quote lines and then send those to the external system to see if we have prices. Uh, in practice, this could be more complex if you wanted to include additional details like account, uh, fields on the quote, uh, other fields on the quote line or things that happen during configuration. So it's a simple array with both product IDs in there. Uh, next, we've got the response that comes back from our Apex REST class. So that's a prices object with uh, an array that contains two items. We've got the $50 price for our externally priced product, and then we have a no price that comes back for the product that doesn't have the externally priced. Then finally, the quote calculator plugin is looping through and matching up anything in the external pricing response with the quote lines and repricing them appropriately. So next, I'll show that, so we're connected to our external pricing database here. Um, I just have one row, it's just my external price for that externally priced product, $50 right now. If I change it to 25, save the changes in my external database, come back to Salesforce and hit calculate again, it pulls in the new price immediately. The other cool thing is that we're building on top of standard Salesforce CPQ functionality, so we can continue to use things like discounting to reflect changes in the price on top of our call out to the external system. You can see we added a 10% discount and now we're down to 22.50 for our net unit price. So I'll save our quote here. Once we get back to the quote, we can see the quote lines. Um, we're also using the special price description field just to make a note that we have a price received from the external system or we don't have a price received from the external system along with a custom date time field uh, called last external calculation time, so that we can timestamp the last time that we calculated it 
That way, if the prices change in our external system, we can decide whether or not we need to update prices on our quote. So that concludes the demo portion. Now let's take a, a look behind the scenes at how we set that up. So first off, we have the custom script object. So this is a custom object that comes with Salesforce CPQ and it's used for storing the quote calculator plugin code. So I have our pricing quote calculator plugin here. The key fields here, script name. So this will, uh, we'll be able to add this in our CPQ settings to define which custom script is going to, going to run. We have the quote field on the left here. That's where we can enter any valid JavaScript code. And on the right, we have our transpiled code. So Salesforce CPQ will automatically transpile any uh, ES6 JavaScript code down to ES5 so that it can run in any browser. And then that transpiled code is what actually ends up getting run during the quote calculator plugin. So we have our custom script name. Now in setup, We'll be in our installed packages. We'll go to our CPQ package, hit configure. And once we get to the package settings, there will be a plugins tab where we can put in the name of the custom script that we want to run. So in this case, I have my pricing quote calculator plugin running. I also had a debug one that I was working with earlier. Um, and you can see there are a number of different plugins that Salesforce CPQ provides to extend functionality. So that's it for the Salesforce side of the configuration. Let's take a look at the code. So this is the same quote calculator plugin code that was uh, running inside the Salesforce org. I have it up in VS Code. It's a great development environment if you're looking for a new one, especially with all the SFDX stuff. Um, so first thing, we're going to declare our path to our Apex resource. So this is the endpoint that we're going to call out to in our Salesforce org. It's exposed at that slash services, slash apex rest, slash pricing endpoint. Next, we're going to export the on before calculate function. So that was one of the five functions that Erwan talked about earlier that you can add into the quote calculator and have it run during the calculation sequence. So that on before calculate function takes three parameters. We have the quote, which is the JavaScript representation of the quote being evaluated. We have the lines, we saw that array of the line models, which is the same JavaScript representation of those. And then we finally have the JS force connection object. So that's the object that we're going to use to query our external system. You can also use it to query other records inside of your Salesforce org, um, update, delete, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're just gonna start off with that same logging that we saw before. Then we'll do a, a quick check on the length of the lines array. So if we don't have any quote lines, we're gonna skip the call to the external pricing service. We don't need to make a call out then. Uh, and then importantly here on line 31, we're going to return a promise that resolves right away. So if you are doing synchronous logic, you can just return a promise that has that resolve uh, call right at the end. Next, we're gonna generate the request body to be sent. So this was that array of product IDs. So from all of our lines, we're just going to map that and get the product ID that corresponds to those quote lines. And then we're gonna create a really simple body where we have our object, which is the product ID. And then we're gonna create an array of the unique product IDs by using JavaScript uh, set data structure. Then we're going to construct the call to the URL. So we have the base URL. We're going to use the JS force connection object, it has a instance URL property, so that tells us where our JS force connection is running from. From that, we'll append the path that we defined earlier. And then since it's running in the CPQ visual force domain in the quote line editor, we're gonna replace the visual force domain with the dot my Salesforce domain, so we're calling from the correct domain there. Then we'll just log that all to the console so we can check. Then to the actual meat of our uh, Pricing callout, we're going to return uh, the JS force connection object with the dot request post. So that's a, going to make a post request out to the URL we defined earlier and passing the body along with that. Since the uh, request post is a promise, uh, we can use the dot then operate or function to capture the response and then do something with that response inside of our quote calculator plugin without the calculator plugin continuing without waiting for the response there. So we're grabbing our response, we're gonna parse that response into an object that we can use later. And then we're using the external prices 
uh, key to set that to an array, and then we're gonna pass that into a separate price lines function to appropriately reprice our quote, quote lines. Also important to remember, whenever you're working with promises in JavaScript, uh, you should always have a dot catch block so that you can catch any errors that might happen and handle those however you want. I'm just logging them to the console here. So this is the price lines function that actually takes in our array of quote lines and our array of external prices and it'll return a prom. So for each of these lines, we're gonna loop through, we're going to use our price array and we're going to try and find where the product ID matches the product ID on the quote line. That way we know that we have the external price that matches. We'll log it to the console there. And then we're gonna do some quick error checking. So we wanna make sure that we found an external price. If we didn't find an external price, we're gonna be working with an undefined uh, object. We don't wanna do that. And then we wanna check if our external price is not null. So if it did have a price in the external system, we wanna use that. So we're using the standard uh, Salesforce CPQ special price field special price type set to custom, so that lets Salesforce CPQ know to use the special price field in subsequent cal calculations. Then we're gonna write to the special price description field that we did find a price from the external system. And then finally, we're gonna timestamp that last external calculated time. So this is another thing to just be aware of if you're working with dates between JavaScript and Apex, make sure that your formats are correct so that the dates get carried over. Uh, and then finally, if we don't find an external price, we'll just write that there's no external price and then our last external calculated time. So that covers the quote calculator plugin code. Pretty basic, but should provide a framework to build on top of. Next I'll talk about the Apex REST class that we have that's making the actual call out to our external system here. So as you can see, it's a global class with the at REST resource declaration. So that lets Salesforce know that this needs to be exposed at this specified URL mapping. So that was that services slash Apex REST slash pricing endpoint. Inside of our Apex class, we have one method which is annotated with the at HTTP post. So that tells Salesforce that any incoming post request to this endpoint will get handled by this post external pricing uh, function. Inside of that, we're taking a list of strings, which is our product ID. That way Salesforce can deserialize that into an object. We've got our list of strings there. Next, we're gonna have our URL to query. So this is our external system that we're calling out to. This could be stored in a custom setting or something, so you're not you know, in there editing the code every time. For demo purposes, it's just a hard-coded string. Next, we're creating a new HTTP request object. We're gonna set the endpoint, we'll set the method, so we're making a post request to our external system and just let them know that we're using the application JSON. Uh, next, we're going to use the great built-in uh, JSON and JSON generator classes that Salesforce provides. Uh, so I didn't know about these until very recently, um, but it's a great way to be able to write out JSON inside of Salesforce Apex without trying to craft it by hand. So here I'm just writing the, the object out the same way it comes in to the Apex class, um, but it's great if you have more complex JSON that you might need to manipulate and don't wanna go through the trouble of trying to escape all of the uh, uh, apostrophes and special characters. Um, then we'll use the uh, JSON generator get as a string function. That'll return us our JSON string that we can then set as our request body. The request body gets set and then we're gonna send our re request out to our external pricing service, get the response back. So we've got our return value here which is just the raw JSON string. And then we're gonna return that raw JSON string back to Salesforce CPQ where the quote calculator plugin can go in, parse the object, and reprice the quote line. So that covers the Salesforce side of things. Let me go back to our presentation quickly here and talk about some best practices and pitfalls that Erwan and I have identified. So some general best practices when we're working with the quote calculator plugin making sure to handle async logic and promises. So if you have uh, callouts that, and don't use a promise, uh, the callout will continue to run and your calculator might either hang or the operation might complete after your calculation sequence, sequence has run, so you might be working with undefined data there. Use the best tool for the job, so price rules versus quote calculator plugins. Erwan mentioned there's a lot of great tools out of the box and we saw how we can use quote calculator plugins 
in conjunction with existing Salesforce CPU functionality. This is another great tool to have in the tool belt and just evaluate which one might be best for your use case there in terms of scalability and maintainability. Um, and then of course, utilizing functions to separate logic, just general good practice there. You saw I had that price lines function. It's a good way to separate out business logic from the core functions that you're exporting inside of the Salesforce CPQ Quick Calculator plugin. Um, some potential pitfalls, so of course, performance con considerations. This is JavaScript code and it runs very quickly client side or on Heroku when you're doing batch processes. But one thing to be aware of when we're doing uh, callouts to external systems is we either have long running callouts or potential timeouts for those external systems. So just be aware of how you wanna handle that situation and then be able to uh, handle any errors that come from that. Which leads me into error handling. So of course, changing between Apex and JavaScript. Um, I think a lot of the developers are getting more and more familiar with that as we've worked with uh, Salesforce Lightning and Lightning Web components where we have to be cognizant of changing between different data types um, and then handling any possible error states. So just making sure that you're gracefully handling any errors that you might encounter. Salesforce CPU handles a lot of errors out of the box, but when you're writing your own JavaScript code, uh, you have to make sure that you're doing your own error handling there. Uh, finally, we wanted to point out some additional resources. So of course, the Salesforce developer documentation. Uh, got the link there. That's a great starting point for uh, the Quote Calculator plugins. Um, the JS Force library, so that was the library that we used to make the call out to our Apex REST class. We could have also used that to directly call our external pricing service if we wanted to. Uh, and then finally, uh, I put this up on a public GitHub repository, so all the code that you saw today uh, and even some more, the quote calculator plugin code that I went through, the Apex REST class, and then the Heroku demo app. So I didn't show that, but if anybody wants to get started and play around with their own, hopefully this will be a good starting point. And I believe all of these slides will be uh, posted on the session record, uh, hopefully later this week. So you'll have a copy of that as well. With that, I'll turn it back over to Erwan. All right, thank you, Sam. Great, uh, great demo, great explanations, very detailed. Uh, I hope you guys found this informative. Yes, yes, good. Uh, I hope that gives you a better understanding of the capabilities of the Quote Calculator plugin uh, with all the great explanations that Sam uh, gave you. You know, I think you can start uh, tomorrow. Keep in mind, don't, I mean, you, you might fall in love with the Quote Calculator, calculator plugin. Don't use that for every single use cases. Sometimes it's the best tool for the job, sometimes it's not, so keep that in mind. Uh, with that, I think we still have a, uh, a few more minutes for uh, questions and answers, so we'll stick in the room uh, for any questions that you might have. If you do have questions, I'll ask you to uh, use the uh, microphone in the L, uh, and, uh, and we can take any question you have. Is this on? Okay. Yeah, what container is the uh, JavaScript running in? Is it, a, is it in a Visual Support, Visual Force page? Or yep, a so it's, it's running in the Visual Force page uh, that loads the CPQ quote line editor app. So it runs alongside and gets uh, included in that normal calculation sequence there. And just maybe a follow-up yeah. question. Did, um, just as an alternative architect, um, was there a consideration of of packaging this functionality within a Lightning component instead of Visual Force? That is a good question, and I will leave that for a product <laughs> manager. Uh, that is a good question, uh, not for now. Uh, we have other plans for the, uh, for the pricing engine uh, to revamp the pricing engine and, and bring that to uh, the core of Salesforce. Uh, this is long-term plan, though. It's gonna take several releases to, uh, to come to life. Thank you. Any other question? Yep. Um, so if you are like outside of the edit lines UI and yeah. you're inserting records, will this still fire? Uh, so yeah, if, it, if anything that will trigger that quote recalculation, so that was what Erwan was talking about when it also runs in asynchronous mode on Heroku. So yes, it w you don't have to worry about it not running during some part of the, the CPQ calculation once you've added it. Yeah. So it's come, maybe this may, it's probably too, complex of an answer right now, but I think one of the, the areas that I'm always curious about on the calculator plugin is like, which method should I use? Should I use before calculate, after calculate, like like before price was after it, you know? So like, I don't know if there's a way we can increase or improve the documentation on like maybe some examples of 
you know, when, when should I use that particular method? Because I think sometimes when I'm looking, I'm like, well, wait, which one, you know, like, where should this go? And what are my ramifications of, say, doing it before my price will expire or after my price will expire? Yeah, I mean, there are, there are whole stuff stumped, I think, that are documented, but it's true that it's, it's kind of lacking some examples. Uh, we're working on, on our documentation trying to improve it. Uh, there's definitely an area that, that needs some improvement. In the meantime, in the documentation, you'll find the same, or kind of the same diagram as the one that I shared. Uh, so you can use that as, as a baseline, but I agree that, that more examples uh, would be <coughs> helpful. Yeah, and kind of the follow-up is, uh, you mentioned that you're like, redoing some of the pricing engine. And does that include, like, I know some of the formula functions, there are new formula functions that aren't available, that are available in Salesforce, but are not available, like, in, so I'm trying to write a price tool, and I wanted, there was one, I can't remember what it was, but there was recently a newer formula that's available in the formula engine, but isn't in the JavaScript, basically isn't the JavaScript one yet. Is that going to become the parity as well? Uh, yeah, okay. the goal is that, yes. Cool, thanks. First of all, beautiful, beautiful demo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any reason that um, you did the double uh, REST call from JavaScript? Oh, yeah, no, there, there wasn't, there wasn't a, a strong reason to do that. I just wanted to also show some of the capabilities of Apex REST. Um, you know, another thing too could be if you wanted to make the call to the Apex REST class, then it can be exposed, you know, for other uses outside of maybe the, the quote calculator plugin itself. So if you needed that data elsewhere in Salesforce, or if you wanted to do additional things like, uh, you know, query some account records or get more details there and uh, fill out the request response further and then send that to the external system or create records from the response that you received from your external system. So if you wanted to update your inventory system inside of Salesforce in addition to reflecting those changes on the quote line editor. So just another another path through to, to be able to influence records. Well, I'm asking uh, because we did exactly the same. So okay. Yeah, yeah no, I, I mean, I think you should be able to make the direct call using the JS Force connection. Um, the other thing is that it's easy. Salesforce handles a lot of that authentication and authorization since we're calling from a Salesforce domain to our Salesforce domain where Apex REST class is hosted. We don't have to worry about passing any authentication or authorization header through there. And then we could handle our authentication authorization. So I guess what I didn't show is that it's an unauthenticated endpoint. Um, you can use things like named credentials that you know Apex works with really well to call out to our external system itself. Could be another reason. All right, no more questions? Everything clear? Good. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, Sam and I will be. Uh, have oh, I'm sorry. Question, uh, Neha here. Uh, how how about uh, we getting this plugin? Uh, how do we install that? Or how do we get access to it? So it's it's a part of the Salesforce CPQ package. Um, is this the quote calculator plugin extends the the CPQ calculator there? Um, so I'm not sure if there's a. W I'm not sure what's the best way to get an install for that. So to get the CPQ package installed or to get the quote calculator plugin capability enabled? The quote calculator plugin. Oh, it's, it's already installed, it's part of the package. So there's no more, okay. there's no additional installation yep. steps. You just have to, just have to use it uh, and follow the steps that Sam, Sam worked through uh, in order to uh, create the custom script and uh, link the custom script in the, uh, in the settings and then you're ready to go. Perfect. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Oh, Appreciate I'm sorry, one, oh, more? one more. Okay. Uh, we currently have a nightly job that pulls pricing into our products and product options and such. Do you see advantages of calling out to get the pricing data when you're adding to the quote, or what? I guess. I mean, I, I think getting. I mean, it's a it's a pretty generic response I'm going to give you. But generally, uh, if the pricing data is in Salesforce structured with price books and discount schedules that is probably a, be a better architecture. You'll get better performance. Uh, when I would encourage you to use the calculator plugin is if you, if you keep separate logic in two different systems, the point I was making earlier is that then you have a risk of having discrepancies, especially if the pricing logic is very complex. In that case, it might be helpful to just keep that in the third party system and then use the quote calculator plugin. OK. 
Okay, thank you everyone. We'll be available afterwards if anybody has any more questions.